Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. So let's try to understand some different organization uh, today. Okay, so we have heard a lot of uh, a lot of the things about Election Commission of India, right? Uh, uh, various other constitutional bodies in India. So today, what we are going to know is completely different. Okay, so it is related to the financial field of India. Okay, so what are you witnessing today in India? So especially in the political field. So there is too much hue and cry. So there is lot of you know stir in the economical uh, field of India. Uh, uh, what are you observing today? So in this field, right? See, uh, correct. There is a some protest by the political parties, especially the party which belongs to the opposition in the central government. It is protesting against some of the uh, <coughs> arrests or the some of the investigations conducted by uh, some premier institution in the country, right? So their prominent leader is being questioned by the uh, investigating agency. That act of investigating agency, which is questioning the prominent leader, has created lot of disturbance or lot of stir in the economical field of in the India, right? So that is why the you are witnessing lot of disturbance in the Indian society today. So then, which is that organization which has created so much of tension? Who is that? You know, let's not understand who is that prominent leader. So what is the role and responsibilities of this organization which is questioning the leader, right? See, we have lot of investigating agency in the Indian political setup or Indian administrative setup, right? Especially the <coughs> CBI is there or Central Bureau of Investigation, investigating <coughs> Investigation Bureau of India, that is IB, then External uh, Intelligence Unit, that is RAW, that is Research and Analysis Wing. See, in this way, there are various investigating agencies, there are lot of uh, intelligence agencies, right? See, their mandate is to carry out the investigations in their own respective field. So, what we are going to learn today, uh, it is such a, you know, investigating agency that is called as the Enforcement Directorate or it is also called as the Directorate of Enforcement. So, in short, it is called as the ED, okay? <coughs> Okay, it is Enforcement Directorate. <coughs> Let me uh, cite some of the names. Okay, Mohul Choski, Nirav Modi, Lalit Modi, Vijay Malla. So, what do you imagine if I say these things? What comes to your mind? Yes, these are the unpopular people in India. They have you know, uh, fled the country. They have taken shelter in the different countries, right? So these are called as the economic offenders. So these are the economic offenders. They have committed some of the crimes, uh, especially the financial crimes, right? So they have fled the country. Now, there are some other organizations. I will list or I will cite some of the organizations, okay? So Maharashtra Cooperative Society, right? There is a... <coughs> Sterling Biotech Company, right? There is P uh, Punjab National Bank or PNB Bank, right? There is one more uh, Augusta Westland case was there, right? INX Media case. These cases or these organizations, they have involved again in some of the financial irregularities. They have been, you know, listed. They have been questioned or they have been investigated by this enforcement directorate. So if you look into these people, uh, these unpopular people, or if you look into the uh, institutional mechanism uh, which led to the financial irregularities of various institutions, whatever I have listed, if you look into all these things, there is a lot of financial irregularities. There is a multi crore fraud happened in these organizations by some of the uh, fraudsters, right? See, these things have been questioned. See, as long as the high profile cases are running as long as the people who commit the high profile you know mistakes they uh, there is a, a lot of threat to the indian financial stability right these things have they have to be questioned they have to be investigated right see that job is done by the enforcement directorate so this is one of the premier institutions in the country. This is the apex body in the economical field which will look into the financial uh, no crimes or financial irregularity. It is a multidisciplinary organization. That means this organization is combined uh, of different people coming from the different walks of life. Like there are uh, 
excise department is there there is income tax department is there right police officials are coming uh, indian administrative officers all of these people from different sections of the governance they are coming and co collaborating and they are achieving the aims and objectives of the enforcement directorate that is why in that way it is a multidisciplinary organization then as the name itself suggests it is the premier financial investigating agency that means this is the topmost investigating agency in the financial field okay then it functions in the rest, uh, strict compliance with the constitution and the laws of india see the our constitution it aims and it strives to establish the financial equality among the people right it wants to establish the justice of economic political and social right see the word economic justice is very important that means even under the directive principles of state policy the constitution wants to establish the equality among the people each and every citizen of india must be provided with the proper economic justice that means there should not be any inequality among the people while you know getting the benefits of the material resources of the country right so in that way this enforcement directorate you know uh, it gets its mandate from the you uh, know in, in one way it gets the mandate from the constitution of india and laws of the parliament the parliament is the apex legislating body in the country it will enact the laws and there are various laws related to the financial field like uh, pmla that is uh, prevention of money laundering act is there uh, financial exchange management act is there financial exchange regulation act of india is there economic offenders act or financial offenders act various acts are there so these acts will give the powers to the enforcement directorate and this ed will strictly adhere to the laws uh, 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 it, it will strictly adhere to the provisions of the constitution and the provisions of the various parliamentary laws. Then, mandate. What is its mandate or what is its major objective? Its major objective is to investigate the offences. The offences are the mistakes or the crimes belonging to the money laundering and these two terms are very important. Money laundering and foreign exchange. Right? The money laundering, what do you mean by money laundering? Money laundering is nothing but generating the uh, huge amount of money without revealing or without disclosing the source of the generation. That means you will be having a lot of money uh, obtained from uh, illegal means, right? If you are not able to tell exactly from where this money, particular money, whatever you are having is coming from, that will amount to the financial uh, irregularity as it will, you know, uh, attract the provisions of the law of the uh, prevention of money laundering. That means money laundering is nothing but when the money is generated without disclosing its source. That means that source must be having illegal uh, uh, means, right? So illegally obtained money, that is also called as the black money, right? That is money laundering. Then what is foreign exchange? Foreign exchange is nothing but it is the platform where the foreign currency is bought and the sold or the market in which the transaction takes place uh, between currencies of the different countries, right? So that is, uh, that is nothing but selling and buying of the currencies of the different countries, right? That is foreign exchange. If there is a, any irregularity in getting or selling the uh, currency of the different country then it will attract the you know uh, eyes of the enforcement directorate these are the two very very important mandates of the the enforcement directorate now it's it is specialized in some jurisdiction that is specialized jurisdiction is nothing but the anti corruption see in one way this enforcement directorate it aims to establish the corrupt corruption free uh, environment in the country so in that way it is a anti-corruption agency so you might have seen in, in in your everyday life you might have observed that certain political people or certain businessmen they will garner lot of amount of money right so they will bribe the some of the officials or some of the politicians they will bribe and they will collaborate with the politicians it is also called as the uh, unholy nexus between businessmen and the polit politicians this collaboration between the business and the politics will lead to the corruption right when it is again aided by the bureaucracy it will lead to the economic disaster in the country right so to prevent such di disasters 
this you know enforcement directorate you know works as the bulwark right in our economic system so these are the some of the introductory you know uh, comments about the enforcement directorate now let us coming to the core values what are the values of this organization that means what values this organization be, you know uh, believes in right so uh, you might have again heard some of the issues like cbi becoming the cage parrot of the the uh, party in the power that means the cbi is you know it will be acting as the cage parrot or it whatever it tells as the political masters you know order so this this is one of the allegations against the cbi so it holds good for various investigating agencies like ib or cbi or ed so most of the central agencies they will be attracting some of the criticisms like this so it is not you know true these institutions work according to their believed value system they have their own mandate within that mandate within their believed you know uh, value system they will be acting so for some people it may you know uh, seem like uh, it is you know acting in a biased way but in no way uh, i can say that these you know central investigating agencies are biased okay so if you look into the core values of this enforcement directorate you will you know strongly believe that this ed is the very strict organization it believes in its own value because of these values only we are enjoying the corruption free uh, you know at least uh, we are you know uh, able to live in a corruption free environment yes i am not telling that we are you know completely free from the corruption environment but comparatively we are living in a uh, you know a corruption free environment right so integrity as you know uh, i am not going to ex you know explain all these uh, you know you know uh, terms here i will briefly give the meaning of these terms integrity it believes in the integrity that means what is integrity it means you know there is a cooperation between uh, your words and the actions when there is a tandem between the words and the actions it will you know lead to the integrity that means whatever you say in that way only you will act or whatever you you act that only will be said by your mouth so this is integrity see here so it is telling that it it is strongly believes in the some moral principles it believes in the honesty and the sincerity right uh, at it 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 is displayed by the high standards of personal conduct and the character of the officials if you look into the caliber of the these officers as i said these officers are drawn from different cadres like ias ips and uh, revenue services and from the people from uh, uh, same cadre like enforcement directorate uh, staff will be there so these are you no know, officers are you not know, drawn into this organization they will be having very good track record right so based on their track record only they are selected to serve under the such a you know premier investigating agency so that means these people have high standards of morality right then accountability what do you mean by accountability accountability is nothing but the answerability whatever you do that must be answered by yourself that means there must be a reason without any reason you are not you know going to do any of the actions right all the actions are based on some you know uh, pre believed you know uh, uh, belief system right so here this organization is you know responsible for the consequences of its effort whatever the cases it it, it, in, it investigates right the result will come out right for that result or for the verdict of this enforcement directorate will be completely uh, in accordance with the believed system that means it is answerable whether the case comes in a negative way or positive way irrespective of the verdict of this investigation it will stand for its result that means it is answerable to its actions whether the action has led to the positive result or negative result but it will be completely owned by this ed okay this is the meaning of uh, the accountability now let us look into the commitment <coughs> third value system that is commitment commitment means dedication or perseverance or uh, one more term dedication perseverance <coughs> determination to achieve the result it is highly committed itself to bring the result it will not leave the cases in between it will completely uh, you know uh, in investigate the case and it will come to a conclusion that is the commitment of this organization right it aims to achieve team and organizational objectives right then excellence 
it aims to excel in all the actions it does and it seeks to uh, constantly improve the work performance and uh, sharpen its investigative skills learning from global best organizations are the best practices yes being the premier organization it has to set the example for rest of the organizations in the in that same sphere right so in that way so it will you know bring some of the novel ideas from the different organizations uh, at the global level or if there is any best practices to be adopted this organization is free to adopt it and it will improve the skill of investigating process so this is the in that way it it strives to achieve the excellent in its field then impartiality so this imp impartiality principle will be questioned by a lot of the people but so if you look into its strong believed system it aims to be fair and reasonable in its investigation it wants to be fair so it don't want to uh, uh, give the biased verdict or biased result right then it aims to pursue and reveal the truth so at the end of the investigation the truth should come out right it aims to bring the truth in that way so this organization you know uh, is you know uh, acting in a impartial way so it is not bringing any of the biased truth no the, it is not telling the false as the truth right truth will be the truth in the end so it this is aimed at bringing that you know highly valued principle called the truth in that way it is a impartial organization right so it it it, it has lot of power it has lot of you know uh, uh, punishment powers right so if, when the organization or when an agency has lot of its own power it doesn't have to be restricted by any other uh, person or any other officer right so it it doesn't uh, you know favor any of the person or it will not you know work in an biased way right so it doesn't have any malice or it doesn't have any prejudice against any of the persons right in that way it is a completely impartial organization if you look into these core principles of this organization do you think that this ed is a biased organization no right so in no way this you know ed is not a uh, you know biased organization it is completely transparent impartial and highly integrated and committed organization in the country we are lucky enough to have such an premier organization in the economical field of the country right then history of the uh, this organization right how this organization evolved when it came into existence right so the, it has its origin in the year 1956 so initially when this organization was set up it was not called as the enforcement directorate but it was called as the economic uh, enforcement unit it was not called as the enforcement directorate but it was called as the enforcement unit or eu right so <clears throat> it was under the administrative control of the department of economic affairs you might have uh, or you might be very well aware that different uh, ministries are there under the government of india these ministries will be having diff different departments right to carry out the legal process or to carry out the policy decisions taken by the government uh, they, these ministries will take the help of departments and these departments will in implement the all the you know decisions taken by the central government so this you know ed was called as the eu initially and it was established in the year 1956 when it was established it was under the administrative control of the department of economic affairs right so this department is under the ministry of finance right very good then let's go to the uh, next slide so when it was established its you know headquarter was created in the new delhi right new delhi was the headquarter along with the headquarter there were two branches namely uh, the bombay and calcutta so along with the headquarter there were two regional branches then in the 1957 so this enforcement you know unit was renamed the eu was renamed as the ed right i said initially it was not called as the ed now in the 1957 it started to be called as the enforcement directorate right so again new branch was established at the madras this was the third branch again in the 1960 now initially this ed was under the administrative control of uh, department of economic affairs this administrative control was now shifted to the different department called the department of revenue from dea or department of economic affairs now the powers are shifted our administrative control is shifted to the department of revenue again this department is also under the ministry of finance okay 
both the uh, departments department of economic affairs and the Depa department of revenue both are under the ministry of finance now as of now in 2022 uh, the whole organize uh, sorry uh, administrative control of this ed is under the department of revenue okay now uh, in 1973, very important development takes place. It, uh, it is the enactment of the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. Initially, in the year 1947, to regulate the foreign exchanges in India, the parliament enacted the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act in the 1947. But in the, 19, in the year 1973, this FERA, uh, which was enacted in the 1947, was replaced by FERA of 1973. This FERA is nothing but the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. This Foreign Exchange Regulation Act gives a lot of power to the Enforcement Directorate to investigate into the financial irregularities and it also gives the power to punish uh, for the offences, right? So again, uh, one more development takes place in the 1973. So for four years, so from 1973 to 77, again, the uh, administrative control of this organization belonged to the, the de Department of Personal and Administrative Reforms, right? <coughs> for four years. So this uh, ED came under the uh, administrative control of Department of Personal and Administrative Reforms, right? Uh, presently, this directorate is under the control of Minist Department of Revenue. Don't, you know, confuse uh, the uh, the control is shifting under department, uh, under different departments, right? As of now, so I just gave the historical background, but as of today, this ED is under the de uh, administrative control of the Department of Revenue, right? <coughs> Now, you are very well aware of this fact, what happened in the 1991. So in the year 1991, India opened itself to the global economy. Now Indian economy was integrated with the global economy. So in what way? There was two stalwarts uh, in the Indian administrative you know, system or in the governance system. The Prime Minister was the uh, P.V. Narasimha Rao and the then Finance Minister was, yes, uh, your Manmohan Singh, Dr. Manmohan Singh. These two people initiated the uh, economic, uh, you know, liberalization in the country, right? So economic liberalization means opening the Indian economy with the, uh, to the global economy. So liberalization was there, globalization was there and privatization was there. These three processes led the India to the different economic level, right, uh, in the world initially we were just an uh, underdeveloped country because of the 1991 reforms now we have reached the status of developing developing economy in the world right so 1991 economic reforms takes uh, took place but in the 1999 there was one more very important development so that was nothing but the uh, enactment of the foreign exchange management act 1999 uh, now it is called as the fema or foreign exchange management act again I, initially I said this ED was just you know uh, enacted through a uh, <coughs> what you call as the executive order there was no law which gave birth to this organization it was purely an uh, administrative setup it was purely a brainchild of the some of the uh, ministers right so that in that way it was the uh, executive body that means it was uh, established through an executive order. Just the parliament or the executive body of the uh, central government, that is council of ministers, they passed one order and that order led to the uh, establishment of the ED. But in the year 1999, this ED gets the legal backup. Now, it is started to be called as the statutory organization or the legal organization. That means the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999, it recognizes the ED as the legal body, right? So, now it gets the legal recognition. Now, that is why it is called as the, right, uh, statutory organization. Now, very important development again in the year 2002. So, this among all these acts, whatever I have said, FERA 1947, FERA 19. Uh, 73, FEMA 1999. So compared to these three laws, the PMLA, that is Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002, it gave a lot of powers to the uh, en uh, Enforcement Directorate. Now it can confiscate the properties of the uh, <coughs> fraudster or uh, fraud uh, organization. It can attach the assets of the fraudster, right? So in that way, PMLA give a lot of powers to the Enforcement Directorate. So in a true sense, the Enforcement Directorate got its 
power actual powers from the PMLA 19 sorry 2002 that is uh, prevention of money laundering act now <coughs> in 2018 one more very important development takes place so that is called as the fugitive fugitive economic offenders act right or f e o a fugitive economic offenders act what are these fugitives see you might have um, heard in the in, in, again in the introductory remark i said some of the names like vijay malla lalit modi nirav modi or mehul choski these people they have fled the country and they have shrek, uh, taken shelter in the other country that means they have escaped the legal jurisdiction of india and they have taken shelter in the another country now indian people are the uh, since uh, all the courts and the laws they have jurisdiction only over the territory of india right so now these laws will not apply to the another country territory right so they have taken the advantage of this flaw uh, in the indian system and now they are living in the another country that is why we are not able to arrest these people openly right so to prevent such you know uh, uh, fugitive uh, people the people who take the shelter in another country the, the government of india enacted uh, one novel uh, act called as the fugitive economic offenders act in 2018 now <clears throat> because of this act only recently we have heard the uh, news that some of the economic offenders offenders are being traced in the different country and now they are being you know uh, transferred to the indian soil now indian government has made negotiations with uh, another country and it has gained the confidence of the another country and that country is now ready to extradite or send the fugitive economic Uh, economic offender back to the india so thanks to the fugitive economic offenders act 2018 now this act also gave the lot of powers to the enforcement uh, directorate now now look into the functions of this uh, ed right w what kind of functions it does see so it draws its uh, functions or the uh, regulatory powers from the various acts whatever the i have mentioned all the acts so far um, most of the acts i have mentioned right pmla act 2002 or fera act 1947 fera act 1973 fema act that is foreign exchange management act of 1999 all these four laws give lot of powers to the enforcement directorate and it draws all the power from all these laws there is one more uh, law like uh, there is one more law called as the cofe posa this is the conservation of a foreign exchange and prevention of smuggling activities act 1974 so so under this act also the uh, ed gets lot of powers what are these powers i am just you know repeatedly telling that it is getting powers and the you know uh, uh punishable you know powers what are these powers see these powers are nothing but it can attach the properties of the uh, confiscators it can sorry uh, it can attach the properties of the offender it can confiscate the property or it can you know uh, uh, rule that it, uh, the so and so person can should be punished with some of the financial uh, penalties right so in that uh, these are some of the powers again it can go and arrest the uh, person and the concern right it can impose the penalties on the person concerned so these laws give such powers to the enforcement directorate right so under the cofe posa act so it can uh, sponsor the cases of preventive detention with regard to the conservations of the fema so it can sponsor the case right some of the other investigating agency may uh, might be you know uh, filed the case against uh, some of the person who involved in the financial transaction now ed can sponsor that case it can bear the expenses of that case so these are the various you know uh, powers this enforcement directorate gets now again i am telling Uh, the money laundering and foreign exchange so what is this money laundering see this is the black money so these people economic offenders they will generate lot of black money and they will send it to the different country and in the, in the different countries they will be having shell companies they are called as the shell companies these shell companies are nothing but the dummy companies they will not be having some of the legal backup they do not having the proper papers and the rules and the regulation based uh, establishment right such 
you know, uh, these people who generated the black money will send that money to the shell companies and that, that those shell companies will again resend that money back to the India through some proper channels. So in that way, this black money is getting white. So this will create a lot of instability in the country. This is very dangerous development, right? So to prevent such development, so the parliament has given a lot of powers to the ED under different provisions of the various laws, right? Now, uh, let us understand the special court. See, special courts, the whatever the cases they are heard by the enforcement directorate, they will be heard in a special court. Those special courts are nothing but uh, the courts established at the district level. Right? They, are court, uh, they are called as the sessions court or the special courts. These special courts are nothing but the sessions court. What is this sessions court? At each and every district we have two types of courts. One is a sessions court and one is district court. When a district judge you know, sits to hear the cases related to the civil law, it is called as the district court. When the same judge, when he hears the cases related to the crime or uh, it is called as the sessions court, right? When the case is related to the financial crime or uh, when it is related to the various other offenses which are not civil in nature, uh, right? Such court is called as the sessions court and that judge who hears such cases are called as, is called as the sessions judge, right? This, you know, enforcement directorate uh, has the such special courts. See, uh, uh, these offender or the fugitive offender or the, the fraudster, he has the chance to hear the case one more time in the higher courts. If the special court you know, announces the verdict, the uh, uh, affected person has the chance to appeal in the higher courts, right? From special court, he can go to the high court and again he can file the uh, case in the higher courts. In that way, he, there he may get or he may not get the justice according to the facts and figures of the cases. Now, this is how <coughs> this you know uh, legal system of this enforcement directorate works now what is the organizational structure uh, the 1956 the year 1956 it, in in that year itself the government established the headquarter at the the new delhi new delhi was the headquarter and there are various regional you know offices of this uh, enforcement directorate so in the head office uh, sorry in the headquarter uh, this enforcement directorate is headed by director director of enforcement right or the enforcement director so under the enforcement director there are various other directors see initially at the top level ministry of finance is the apex body right? right under the ministry of finance there is a department called department of revenue under the department of revenue there is enforcement directorate this enforcement directorate is located in the new delhi right See, this is headed by the director of enforcement, who, who is now the Sanjay Kumar Mishra. Today, the current enforcement directorate's director is the Sanjay Kumar Mishra. Under him, there is one more person called the special director. He is Rahul Navin, right? So, under a special director, there are three additional directors and there are three joint directors. These eight people, three additional director, three joint director, one special and one director. All these three, uh, sorry, eight people, they are located in the headquarter that is at the New Delhi. But this ED has regional offices across the country. Uh, there are various regional offices in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west and in the center. This ED has its regional offices, right? So those regional offices are listed here. Uh, the central region is New Delhi, uh, located in the, sorry, the headquarter of central region is located in the New Delhi. Northern region headquarter is Chandigarh. Central, sorry, eastern headquarter is Kolkata. Western is Mumbai. Southern region's headquarter is in Chennai. Now, below these headquarter below the headquarter there are regional offices below the regional offices there are zonal officers there are various zonal officers now let us look into the composition of uh, this ed 
the officers belonging to the administrative serv service, police service, revenue service and the own cadre of the enforcement director, they are collaborating each other and they are carrying out the uh, uh, works and the functions of the ED. Now, the based on uh, these, uh, this discussion, I have framed some of the questions. So, please try to answer these questions. There are only two questions, right? Consider the following statements. First statement, the headquarter of the ED is in Calcutta. Second statement says that ED is a multidisciplinary organization mandated with the task of enforcing the provisions of the two special laws. Right? Those laws are Foreign Exchange Management Act of FEMA 1999 and PMLA 2002. These, uh, and third, op uh, third statement is ED is a is administered by the Department of Economic Affairs under the Ministry of Finance. Among all these three statements, which statement is correct? Can you answer this? So I will leave uh, the option to you. Please answer this question and please mention your answer in the comment section. Right. So there is second question. So again, there are two statements. You have to tell well, which statement is correct. Right. First statement is an ED is a part of uh, is ED is part of the Department of Revenue. That means ED is under the administrative control of the uh, Department of Revenue, first statement. And the second one is any appeal against any order passed by the PMLA court can directly be filed in the high court for that jurisdiction. So which statement uh, between these two are correct? Can you answer this? Yes, you are right. The option here, option C is correct. Both the statements are correct, right? Uh, the affected person can go to the higher court the uh, by filing the appeal in the high court right the appeal against uh, special court lies in the high court right uh, this ed has the uh, is under the administrative control of uh, department of revenue <coughs> both these statements are correct so this is all about the enforcement directorate i hope you have learned something from this discussion and now you are able to answer some of the questions uh, based on the enforcement directorate I wish you, uh, you a lot of success for your journey, okay? So thank you for watching this video.